Hello, Ethical Hackers. Today, we're going to learn the most popular Burp Suite extensions for Burp Suite Community Edition. And we're going to test each one of them on OASP Juice Shop, which is a vulnerable web application made for testing purposes. So here we are on the Burp App Store, which you can find under the Extender tab and Burp App Store. And you can sort by popularity. We're going to choose a reverse order. This way, we have the most popular Burp extensions that we can test. We have some extensions which require Burp Suit Professional. I will be doing another video upon your request, which tests those as well using Burp professional. But for now, let's just stick with the community edition. The first one is really straightforward. It does what it says, JSON beautifier, which does nothing but beautifying JSON for you. This was go to extension before Burp released recent versions, which included this feature built in. Now, if I go to the web application, I can proxy my requests through Burp. If you don't know how to use this extension or what Foxy Proxy is, I talk about this in detail in the OWASP Top 10 playlist, which you can find in this channel. Now, if I go, for example, to customer feedback, I should have some requests going through Burp. For example, this request calls the user who am I REST API and returns the data. So let's play with it to give you an idea of what it does. We will send this to the repeater and let's just get rid of this header which will force the cache to be disabled and then send the data. So right away you can see that we have a JSON object which is already pre-formatted. And that's because of the recent versions of Burp Suit. So you can see here we have a pretty button. But if we choose raw, you can see that the JSON now becomes inline. This was not a feature in older versions, so that's why we have this extension. If you install it, you should see that there is a new tab that appears called JSON Beautifier. And what it does is just the same thing as the pretty button except that now we have JSON beautified inside the whole response, not just the JSON payload itself. I would say that this extension is not really useful anymore as it used to be. Now, ActiveScan++, we can skip it because it requires Burp Professional, but it just adds some checks for the Burp Scanner, which is not included in the Burp Community Edition. Now, here we come to HTTP Request Smuggler. This extension helps you detect and exploit request smuggling vulnerabilities, which is a vulnerability that has been discovered by James Kettle. You can see all the links that point to the, this vulnerability. I won't go into the details of HTTP Request Smuggling, but in general, it consists of exploiting inconsistencies between a proxy and the backend server and James Kettle found a way to smuggle requests that can be leveraged to exfiltrate sensitive data. So if we go here, you can see all the details about the paper and a video where James explains the vulnerability in detail. And he provided an extension that can be used to check for this vulnerability. So let's install it and see how it works. For this extension to work, we need Turbo Intruder, which is another extension already available. So now, whenever you have a request like this one, you can right click and you can see here that you have a new menu called Launch Smuggle Probe. But let's actually test that on a website which is actually vulnerable to that. And luckily, PortSwigger provides um, an application for that. I've already talked about PortSwigger Academy before in the Hack for Fun and Profit podcast, which you can find in a dedicated YouTube playlist in this channel. So here we have a bunch of vulnerabilities and one of them is request smuggling. And again, here is uh, all the details related to this vulnerability. 
throughout the explanations, you have a lab that you can apply your knowledge on. So here, for example, we want to detect a content length and transfer encode inconsistency. And it tells you that you can use HTTP request smuggler burp extension to help you. And the idea here is to smuggle a request to the backend server so that the next request processed by the backend server appears to use the method gpost. So let's access this lab. It seems that it's a blog. If we view a post, um, we can see that there is a comment section. So let's send our test. And let's capture the request using Foxy Proxy. So here we have the post request. So let's right click on it and choose Launch Smuggle Probe. And here we are presented with a huge menu. Let's just hit enter. And if there is a vulnerability, we would see it in the dashboard under the issues. But you do see that we have only some dummy results here, which don't reflect the reality. And to be able to see the re results of request smuggler, we need to have pro version. Let's see what Logger++ does. Apparently, it allows you to increase the logging features that you already have in Burp. It logs requests and responses like Burp does, but it also allows advanced filters. It logs all the tools that are sending requests and receiving responses, the ability to log from a specific tool, save the results into CSV format, grab through logs, and so on and so forth. So let's install it. And sometimes when you want to experiment with an extension, you also have the source. So you can go to the GitHub repository, for example, and you might get additional information, including screenshots or tutorials on how to use them. You can see that we are using the extension to filter logs based on a criteria. We can highlight certain requests we can grab through the logs. You have also how to use it. So you can either use a standalone jar or using the burp app from the extender tab like we did. So here we have the logger plus plus tab. And as you can see, it records requests as they are coming much like we do see in the proxy tab. But notice many requests which we are not initiating. And if you recall, these are the requests sent by the HTTP request smuggler extension. So this allows you to effectively know what are the kind of tests that the extension is doing. So here we, we are sending a comment and using a transfer encoding equals to chunked with a bit of capital case play to fool the proxy and we are using a content length of 113, which I guess includes all this content in the post data. We couldn't see such requests if we didn't have logger plus plus. And here we can use uh, filters. So let's say we want to filter only the requests that are sent to juice shop. We can base our filter on this header. So that would be request dot host equals https and then the value of our host and right away you can see that we have only the requests that have been sent to juice shop you can also filter on the response like for example if we want to see all the requests that resulted in a success we can filter the response body to see if we have a success keyword so we will use contains operator in this case, and then the keyword success. And here we have all the requests which generated a success response. We can also define our own filter expressions and store them here. So you can hit add snippet and give your filter a name, success response. And here you can define which filter you want. You can also define multiple filters and use them simultaneously.
I want to only target juice shop and then to do that I need to filter on the request. In this case I would use this host right here with HTTPS. Alright so now I might use this as a log filter and then it automatically brings me to the view logs tab with the results. We can also color those requests so I will tag those requests with an orange color. So now if I go to view logs I can see that this request which returns success is highlighted with orange. We can also use regular expressions to filter our requests which gives us all the requests or responses which have the keyword success for example. So if we choose juice shop and right click we can view that in the logs and it will go straight into the request. You can also define your scope and then check this checkbox to only search through your scope. So if you go to target scope and then add and maybe just use juice now if we go to logger plus plus we want only the in scope items and then when we search we get back just the in scope items and you can tweak all the features of logger plus plus using the options tab for example we can log requests from all the tools which is by default and this allowed us to inspect the requests that were sent using http request smuggler or we can uncheck that and use only the tools that we are interested in. Another neat feature of Logger++ is the ability to import burp proxy history. You can even import from OWASP app. And you can also export as CSV. It will open a dialog to choose which attributes you want exported. For example, if we are interested in just the host header, we can check this line here and hit OK. And this will automatically create a G CSV file for us. And when we open it, you can see all the host headers have been exported successfully. So obviously this is a huge extension which we can address in a separate video. But if you want to dig deeper, you have the About tab which gives you information of how to reach the authors of Logger++. And you also have the help, which is kind of a documentation for all the features that are offered by Logger++. For example, you can see that we can use the body attribute uh, that we used before. You also have an explanation of the filters and how to use them, how to use regular expressions, and so on and so forth. So hopefully this video allowed you to experiment or at least discover the two or three most popular burp suit extensions. Next time we will discover some others. If you found this content helpful, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to this channel so that you get updates whenever I publish a new video on ethical hacking and bug bounty hunting. If you're new to hacking and want to learn the basics, Check out the free OWASP Top 10 Theory and Hands-on training on thehackerish.com and apply your knowledge on the lab which supports it. If you enjoy learning with videos, I invite you to watch the OWASP Top 10 YouTube playlist. However, I encourage you to first try to solve the lab exercises so that you don't spoil them. Don't forget that there are supporting blog posts for most of the videos you watch on this YouTube channel. I also encourage you to subscribe to the Friday newsletter on thehackerish.com to gain some new hacking knowledge at the end of the week. If you enjoy listening while doing other things at the same time, check out the Hack for Fun and Profit podcast, link in the description box. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.